I went to New York when I was 17, when I graduated from high school to study acting. And in the beginning, there's so many things you're learning that are new. So it's challenging in that way where you could easily maybe give up had there been an alternative. But for me there, I didn't really give myself an alternative. I just said, I really want to do this and I pursued it. And I think our job, you know, as we get older is to not blame anyone, <laughs> is to now adapt because now we've been out in the world and we've seen other ways. And you know, it's, it's very courageous to go your own way. We've been told so many things and taught so many things that we, we've stopped questioning things. People reach a point where they say, oh, I'm depressed or I don't know what I want or I'm, it's because they've just, partly it's realizing my own participation in the things that were challenges. The first thing is to teach us to love ourselves. And that's, that part I think is the missing link because then the next step, we, we miss that part and then the whole thing is to love another person. Hey everyone and welcome to a new episode of Growth Essentials. Today I have invited Hollywood actress Kelly Rutherford. Most of you probably know Kelly from the show Gossip Girl, where she played Lily Woodson, the mom of Serena. Today, Kelly is going to let us in a bit on her childhood, why she wanted to become an actress and how she really knew that this was something for her to pursue. We will also deep dive into the topics of authenticity, self-love and rejection. I had a wonderful conversation with Kelly, so I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I did. So I would say, let's go. I'm Melina and this is Growth Essentials, the podcast for your best self on things you wish you learned in school. Kelly, when we go back in time and think a bit more about your earlier years and your childhood, what do you think do we need to know about your earliest context to better understand the woman that you have become today? Such an interesting question. Well, I, gosh, we're all products of our childhood and, and the influences that were there. Um, but for me, I just remember really wanting to be independent and not because of a feminist reason or being a woman or any of that sort of narrative that we, we find ourselves in or that we've been in, but more just, you know, wanting to sort of pave my own way. You know, let's say whether, I mean, I had a paper route when I was nine, wanted to make my own money, you know, have my own home, do my own thing. So, and I also remember really being a people watcher and really being interested in why the people around me made the choices they made. Where do you think um, that feeling of wanting to be independent and creating your own life, making your own money, and yeah, maybe also not being dependent on your parents then, where do you think that came from? Like, where did that, that wish to be independent shape? It could be because we moved around a lot when I was younger. So it could be that, that it was more, you know, being the idea of being in control of your destiny and making your own decisions and, and just being creative in your own life, coming up with your own, you know, your own way of doing things and seeing, you know, the world. What did that moving around, other than that, teach you in such, a early, such, such an early part um, of your life? In many ways, I think it made me incredibly adaptable and open, more open to different ways of doing things and different ideas and, and again, ways of seeing the world, right? Because if you're moving around and adapt, you have to sort of adapt. And and um, so it was really good in that way, especially in terms of what my profession ended up being, which is, you know, also moving around a bit and changing <laughs> and being yeah. incredibly flexible. So yeah, so I think it was, it was really good in many ways. I know people talk about stability being important or, you know, having just like growing up in the same home with the schedule and, and all of that. And I think that's equally as beautiful. Um, and at the same time, there's something really beautiful about being, you know, planted sort of in positions where you aren't the one, you know, it's, it's you're, you're more the observer, you know, it's, it's interesting. I don't know. I, I, I think it was super helpful. When you think about the decision of then 
wanting to become an actress like how did that shape did it was it also based on your curiosity for people and experiencing you know different lives different roles then also like how did that shape itself itself that you said that you want to become an actress there were a lot of things I was interested in and that might have been part of it is that I thought how am I going to do all the things that I'm interested in so um And I knew I didn't want to go to college. I knew I wanted to just get out in the world and and learn about life and travel. And so I went to New York when I was 17, when I graduated from high school, to study acting. And my mother actually, I had done a little bit of it in high school. And, um, and I actually went to a school that my mom had studied years ago when she, when she was modeling years ago in New York. She had studied at this place. So I thought, well, I'll start there and see if I like it. And I thought I would, you know, just take some classes and see if it was something I was interested in. And, and then I really enjoyed it. So I just thought, well, I'll give it a year or two, you know, and pursue it and really see if it's something I'm interested in. And it just, it was something I was very interested in. And I started working pretty consistently when I was about 20. How did you know, like, how did you experience along the way that acting was your thing and your thing that you felt good at doing and was really something that you wanted to have in your life? Well, I, you know, I think in the beginning of anything, it's hard. You know, you're trying to figure out if it is something you love. You're trying to figure out, you know, is this what I want to do the rest of my life? And... um But even though there were times that it was really difficult and challenging, I always knew that it was what I wanted to do. I, I mean, I didn't know that, okay, am I going to do this forever the rest of my life? I don't know where that will lead. Um, but I did know I wanted to do it and I was passionate about doing it. Let's put it that way. Um, and in the beginning, there's so many things you're learning that are new. So it's challenging in that way where you could easily maybe give up had there been an alternative. But for me there, I didn't really give myself an alternative. I just said, I really want to do this and I pursued it. And it actually became more enjoyable over time. In the beginning, it was, you know, a lot of work, a lot of learning. It was a combination of being an artist um, and expressing myself through the form of acting, right? It could have been painting. It could have been sculpting. It was it happened to be acting, right? So this concept of being an artist, but also sort of a reflection of our humanity and who we are as people. So I think it was kind of what was behind it too. And it afforded me a lifestyle that I liked. So I could travel. I could read the books I wanted to read. I could go to museums. I could, you know, watch movies and study film. I think it was also wanting to do it for myself, you know, wanting to prove to myself, obviously, when you start any, any career, or let's say, you know, that you're passionate about, you want to prove to yourself that you can do it. A lot of people, right, especially like my, my female peers, they know you from Gossip Girl playing Lily Wanda Woodson. Um, how was that experience? And how, how did this show particularly impact your career and yourself? Well, it was such an exciting time because I was a new mom and I was playing a mom. <laughs> so I was, you know, coming home to little babies and, and being a, a new mom and then playing a mom that had kids in sort of a more mature place in their lives. So it was really beautiful experience for me and also playing a mother that I hadn't really seen on television much, which, which was really important to me to put that out in the world this sort of matriarch, this woman who, you know, made mistakes in her personal life, but wasn't afraid to say she was sorry or to screw up because we all do as parents. We all, we all do. <laughs> so, but, you know, and to show how, and, you know, she was, it was beautiful the way the writers wrote it, that, you know, she was still figuring out her life and her relationships and her love and her, just like the kids were, it wasn't that much different so um yeah so and to play a character where fashion was involved in a big city and you know a little more sophisticated than we normally see moms portrayed when you jump into those roles right there that are very different from from your life but also from your personality 
um, how much of an impact does a role like that then actually have on your real life? Ideally, they support each other, right? Because you, as you play a part, you learn more. You learn more about yourself. You learn more about other people. Um, so ideally, depending, obviously, if it's your type of character, but you you always take away something, you know what I mean? You always, and, you know, I prefer to play characters that are sort of almost a heightened, heightened version of myself or a version that, that may, I may have a small part of my, in my everyday life, but I sort of allow it to become more prominent, let's say. Um, because the truth is we all have these aspects to us, right? So it's just how much we, focus or, or how you know what we've been influenced to along the way right what would you say have you particularly learned from playing lily in gossip girl then i, I mean i really i mean a lot of of what i loved about the character is that she had a certain ease about her the way she sort of navigated things you know and i really loved that how do you stay true to yourself how do you like in in, in such a life how do you define your own authenticity then is it is that hard to do then I don't think so because I, I find that like most of the characters were just sort of I mean I find a sense of humor really about human beings in general I think we're very peculiar <laughs> most of the time so I think it's sort of how you view life and people it, it's so I definitely You know, I think the fun part of acting is that you can play out different ways in which we as people do do things, whether it's completely ridiculous, whether it's very smart, whether it's, you know, it's just, you know, we get to play out the various ways in which we do things. And, and, and it's sort of a way to reveal our humanity or to take a look at our humanity or laugh at our humanity or cry at our humanity, you know, how, how we are. So... Yeah, I think, in, in a way, I think I've become more authentic because I've allowed myself to express different things or, or allowed myself to go to different places that maybe we don't aren't allowed to if we aren't acting or we aren't painting or we aren't expressing ourselves through music. How would you say, have you actually, yeah, like figured out who you are? Well, I'm certainly still figuring it out. It, it amazes me that I'm, you know, the things I do and go, oh my gosh, well, you should know that by now. Why, you know, <laughs> still, still. So my mother and I talk about it a lot. Like, oh my gosh, when, when will we get that, you know? Um, so I, I just, the values definitely, my family, I, you know, had pretty good values in terms of at least the values that I respect, which is just, kindness to one another for the most part I mean we all have our moments obviously and screw up but um but I think also being able to apologize when you do and to be able to show up and say hey you know hadn't eaten lunch or <laughs> was in a bad mood or upset or whatever the reason is or I, or I misunderstood or I you know just whatever so I think a lot of it was that a lot of it was the is the ability to sort of know that we're all gonna have moments and but how it's how we clean up those moments or how we amend or sort of how we at least do our best to do those things that I think is super, you know, important, at least in, in my family, it's been important. Would you say that actually, if you reflect back on it, that you had a good childhood? You know, I just don't know anything different. So it's hard to say, you know, I mean, there's, there's things that I think all of us, when we grow up, we think, oh, I wish that had been different. But then As I've grown up, I also realize I'm so thankful for things that were there and the way that I was raised. So, you know, and and I think our job, you know, as we get older is to not blame anyone, <laughs> is to now adapt because now we've been out in the world and we've seen other ways in which we can be. We have other options and for us to choose those options because, you know, my mother was 19 when she had me and you know, she was still growing up, she was still finding herself. So what am I going to do? Say, oh, you didn't do everything right, or you weren't this or that. She was 19. If I look at a 19 year old girl today, and start blaming her for things, you know, she's going to say I'm 19. <laughs> you know, and if I look at myself at 19, forget it, you know, just so, you know, I think you, as you get older, you put things in perspective. And so 
did I have a great childhood? Yes, I do think I had a really beautiful childhood. There were things that, of course, I complained about growing up or that I could look back and go, oh. But at the same time, I really know that I was loved very much. And I think that's so important over so many other things. You know, it's why today with my kids, I always just say, you know, do you feel loved? Is, you know, is that because that to me is okay. The other stuff we can sort out. How do you think we can practice that skill more on really looking on, hey, like what's right and what is the beauty in this situation that I am in right now? So how can we, yeah, embrace more like positivity and maybe also gratitude for the things that are right what do you think well the simple short answer is it's the smart way to do your life because it's what you attract more of so <laughs> that's the sort of short simple answer which is just you want to focus on the good because you attract more of it just like if you focus on the negative you attract more of it like an algorithm and it makes you feel better I mean at the end of the day You know, you can go to therapy for years, you can blame everyone, you know, all of that, right? Which is fine. And there's nothing wrong with a good pity party every once in a while and, and a good, you know, writing in the journal about how everyone did everything. And, and some, some of it's true and, you know, okay. But then where does it get you? You know, what is it? How is it serving you now? And how is it serving you going forward? And how is it serving the people around you? It's, it's, it's really... Uh, what you have to think about, um, and let it go. I mean, you know, if somebody or something is really not healthy, then you have to walk away or you have to give it less attention in your life, less focus, you know, and visualizing what it is that we do want because there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of people that may come in and rock your boat or, you know, have their own issues that, you know, that you bump into along the way. And the sooner you can let go of that and walk away from that as gracefully as possible and focus and just, whether it's visualizing things working out, visualizing them more even than talking about them and complaining about them. What's your favorite activity to actually visualize and like how, how how do you do it like do you write stuff down is it more in your head well the idea is to make it fun ideally you know whether it's a vision board whether it's you know we collage stuff on a vision board which is so much fun whether it's writing about it as if it's happening in present time um though so i am doing this i am doing you know as if it's happening today And then the other is, you know, obviously to create a ritual of meditation where, you know, you have a beautiful space and you light a candle and you can, whether you want to put some soft, relaxing music on, you don't want music, and you sit and you just go within and breathe and connect up with yourself because we, we're constantly being pulled out of ourselves and our alignment with ourselves. So, you know, to take that time is so huge. Um, and if that's a ritual that you create for yourself, that's really a gift to you. And you can use that time to, you know, sometimes I keep a journal by myself and write about what comes up from myself, you know, what comes through. Also, you know, if I'm not in the mood to really visualize, if it's not fun, then I usually will write, you know, And then at night before I go to bed, I'll do some visualization. I'll close my eyes. And as I'm sort of drifting off to sleep, I'll think about things or pray about things or, you know, or give it up to the universe to sort of handle for me while I'm sleeping as, you know, or help me with things that I'm, you know, challenges I may be having. So there's so many different ways. There's, there's so many good books. There's that book, Creative Visualization by Shakti Gawain. There's The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. There's all those Louise Hay books. How important do you think really is that time that we are spending just with us? I think it's the most important thing. And, you know, it's, it's very courageous to go your own way. You know, I had a friend recently say, you know, you always just go your own way. You always just have your own. And I, or you have your own way of doing things. And, you know, when I was younger, I would have been kind of like, oh, I'm not fitting in. You know, I always, you know, you want to fit in. I always want to fit in. You know, you want to have friends. You want to 
you know, connect, right? Um, and at the same time, it's, I think, the beauty of spending time on your own. Like, I spend a lot of time not listening to music. I don't watch TV. Just quiet. Even if I'm just puttering around my home or I'm driving in the car, I don't turn on the music. You know, I love Instagram. I love social media, so I spend time there. But when I start to feel that little, ugh, like, this is too much, I'm not feeling so good, I get off of it right away. Because the most important thing is to connect up with your own connection to source or to whatever you want to call that infinite intelligence that is that created all that we see, all that's here, all that is, all that exists. Um, because your information that you're going to get from that is going to be different than the information I get for that because we're here, our DNA is completely, you know, we're, we're made to live out a different story. That doesn't mean our stories don't connect and we don't inspire each other, that we don't, you know have those things or that the world isn't full of polarity and choices and preferences, you know, we just see them that way. But you have to know your own frequency and what your own home frequency feels like to know the difference. And that's something that's taken me a long time to sort of understand or be able to articulate. I always kind of felt it, but I didn't know how to articulate that, um, that sense of this is my home frequency. This is where I feel safe and loved. And when I close my eyes and I get quiet without even putting words to it, this is what I know. You know, this is me, <laughs> my energy, my energy, that I can know the difference when I'm walking into a room, when I'm being pulled out of my energy, my own sense of self. Can you like share something, how it was possible for you to just, you know, go your own way? and just do what you thought was right to do. I think part of it is, is just knowing that, and it took me a long time, I, you know, and it still, it still does, still, to not have to go along with what everyone's saying and doing and be true to how you're feeling. So, and that's, as easy as it sounds, it's super courageous, particularly in the world today because there's group think people jump on the bandwagon of so many different things and if you don't they see you as well why aren't you and I said well why you know this is it, I don't have to be I can have my own thing you know and have my own thoughts on things without sharing them <laughs> and and be my own person without doing what everyone's doing that doesn't make it right or wrong I think people find their safety in numbers in terms of that but it's also it doesn't make you a free thing it doesn't make you think your own thoughts either or you know you just people just kind of go along with things and there's nothing wrong with it um it's just I think and I think sometimes it's the easier path to go along with it It's not that you have to go along or you don't go along. I think there's at least what I find interesting is the neutral space where you can hold many ideas and concepts where you can and not have to attach to them. To me, that's super smart. I mean, when I, I know people that can do that, where they can entertain, is the earth round? Is it flat? And you laugh about it. You can say, well, I don't know. And you can have a joke and it's not seen as, it's of course silly in a sense, but at the same time, isn't it wonderful to step back and allow many things to be possible? Because do we really know? Do you personally really know? We've been told so many things and taught so many things that we, we've stopped questioning things. So even if it's questioning something silly sometimes, um, I find it interesting that many things can be true at one time and there are many more options and avenues that we can pursue that, that we may not be aware of because we just are going along. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not like anything woo-woo or out there. It's just kind of a way of, of looking at things. And my mother was that way. My mother was a bit, you know, she wasn't a rebel, but she was just kind of, she didn't just go along with everything, you know. And so I think... 
you know, and almost to me it was more, it was a lot, but at the same time, I think it informed me in a different way or informed the way I look at things differently. Totally, like probably also that you, you know, like were even able to have that belief that you can, you know, not follow the norm, so to say, and just go like out in the world and do what you feel like it's it's right there's a lot that we don't have to fix later when we do that so you know people reach a point where they say oh i'm depressed or i don't know what i want or i'm it's because they've just they've never questioned it right so you know we're, it's less to have to fix later in in the sense that if you really do find what you want and and to be asked younger i mean to to, to sort of be able to pursue different interests when you're young is super important because it informs your choices. So, you know, a lot of, I think the reason people feel the way they do sometimes or do get depressed or do have these issues is, is because they're not really fulfilling their human purpose, their ultimate purpose of why they're here because they're going along with stuff. We all do it, but to what extent? <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, If we do choose, you know, a certain path, and especially I feel like if it's, I mean, to be honest, that's on every path, but especially if it's not the norm, we will face rejection, right? And I feel like um, you being like an actress, you probably faced a lot of rejection in a sense that people said no to you, um, that you like couldn't go into roles that you maybe like thought of wanting to go into and we do that in all areas of life right whether it's night now on the professional side at like a job interview with a friend with a romantic potential partner how do you think like or, or what ha has this taught you about rejection and what do you think how should we rather maybe think about rejection than something that is very negatively biased so it could be like a blessing in disguise you could be being rerouted in a way that will be a benefit to you so <clears throat> i mean if you had told me that when i first started out as an actress i would have been <laughs> i wish i had figured that out earlier but you know it, it ultimately enough t you've had enough experience with it to know that it's true to know that oh i didn't get this part but this other part actually was better for me or the show went longer, or it was a better experience than that was, would have been. So, but it, it took some time to get there and realize those things, realize that, oh my goodness, if I had ended up with that guy or in that situation, my life would have been that way, and I'm so thankful it went this way. Or even, even the times that it seemed negative, there's so much that you learn through it. So... I mean, the, the thing is, and I'm such a, you know, I'm very impatient, so I kind of plow through things, and I'm learning not to so much. It's that if we really sit back and listen, it's all there. You know, the, the guy sitting in front of you will tell you everything. You'll, you'll, you'll know everything you need to know. It's just we don't want to listen because we want something. We're trying to attain a certain goal or a certain feeling. And so the question is, can I attain that feeling on my own when I get quiet, when I do my visualization, when I do my you know rituals? And really visualize the guy I want to be in my life or visualize the work I want to be in my life. Or, and the more we do that, the less fixing we have to do on the outside. So then we just sort of naturally start attracting more of that type of situation. I mean, how many times you sit and write about what you actually want or how you want to feel with someone, like honestly, you know, like really honestly what you want. And the same with work and all those things. So more times sort of spent doing that um i think is is super helpful and yeah and listening because a lot of it's we have to fix stuff when we don't listen <laughs> it's a lot a lot of time and you know sometimes our mind overrides it but 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 this is good you know this is da, 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 even though there's so many things that are happening around it that are telling you nope and or this feeling of oh well I, will i find something like this again or You know, a sense of, um, you know, just not trusting the timing of your life, not giving the universe 
a minute to co-create what it is that you're visualizing you know we get you know so this has been a huge learning what do you think can one do to be become a better listener what does honestly helps is stillness i mean it's being still within yourself and so that you can and that's something that we're live we're living in a time where that is let's say not not as encouraged as moving and taking in so much information you know i i think what what has helped me is unplugging from most of that stuff and spending time on my own getting quiet so that when i am around someone else i can be present for them because i know what it's like to be just comfortable myself but that you know that's taken some time too um and i still have to catch myself and <laughs> because again I, i tend to want to get on with it or you know see things a certain way so uh, but it, it's actually quite powerful to be presently listening we think it's not but it's actually the most powerful position to be in if you had to reflect on your life journey so far what would you say has been one of the toughest moment in your path so far It depends, you know, I've had like personal life things or I've had, you know, professional things. But I would say partly it's realizing my own participation in the things that were challenges <laughs> is owning up to my own part in it. So I, you know, that's, I think, a, a challenge is to sort of look, is to look back and go, okay, how did I participate in this situation, right? I and mean, there's things that can happen in life, right? People, that have nothing to do with you, people getting sick, you know, that there's like crazy stuff like that, that's way beyond your control. And then there's, you know, personal choices, whether it's in relationships or career th choices that you make that you go, okay, how could I have approached that differently and maybe had a different outcome, Right. You know, and again, that takes stillness and time and space to, and sometimes tears and sometimes laughter and sometimes, you know, just not even knowing, you know, you need that space and we don't really encourage that or, or allow ourselves a lot of that space to look at why we do what we do and how we You know, and the more we do, the less, I think, challenging situations we find ourselves in. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah. Wor it's worth doing. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you recall like a certain situation, a moment where you faced, you know, such a difficult time where you wished to maybe have um, acted Uh, differently in hindsight always I think it's always easier in hindsight you know I think any argument I've ever had in my life I can look back and say oh you know I could have approached that differently do you know what I mean and and so you know hopefully as you go along you have less and less arguments because you're aware of how you respond right because you've done it before you've said oh here we go again okay how can I show up more present with more grace with more kindness with more openness than I did in the past so that I get a better outcome and I still do it I still sometimes get impatient or think I know better or you know or I can see things let's say before the person in front of me you know and so and so I still have to do it It's still even though I mean it's life It's life. It's an ongoing process, right? And undoing things that we were taught as children, you know, maybe by our parents, you know? I mean, things that we didn't even know how we, you know, we're operating in a certain way because that's how our parents operated. Or that's how they engaged with each other. Or, you know, so it takes kind of unlearning certain things and, and trying a different way. And realizing, oh, I think that one's better. I think that that's giving me a better outcome. 
than going up against something in the way that maybe I was taught to do it. I know that also that the, the topic of love is very close to your heart. So like, what do you think, which role does love play in, in our life, like in all areas of life, actually? What's the importance um, of it in your eyes? You know, the first thing is to teach us to love ourselves. I mean, and that's that part, I think, is the missing link, because then the next step, we, we miss that part. And then the whole thing is to love another person and to or romantic love and this and that. So how are you equipped to do that if you haven't learned to sort of at least make peace with and love yourself, you know? And I don't mean like TikTok self-care, love yourself. I mean, like, you know, accept acceptance and kindness to yourself and that it's not in relationships the way that we we want to lock it down and it be forever and own it and control the person we're with and what they do and who they look at and what they whatever you know it's really not it's really love is really allowing the person that you're with engaged with to fully be who they need to be and vice versa i mean that's really real let's say expansive love it's not limited love I think it's because we haven't been really, really taught to love ourselves that it's really hard to be in a relationship or a love dynamic because we're looking for them to love us and them, to, you know, instead of us being overflowing with love already and just being there to sort of appreciate that person. How do you think we can practice more self-love? I think it really is getting still and quiet and having that ritual of, of being able to sit with yourself and cry or write or laugh or into just a, play, a safe, quiet place. You can feel all your feelings, you know, and get to know who you are. Get to, get, it's, it's a journey. I'm still getting to know who I am I'm still because who I am is evolving, right? So, it, and what, what is love? Love is allowing yourself to be who you really are. So if you can sit and quietly present and be just present with that, because we run from it, right? And we don't have to understand it all. You know, there's, there's days when I'm healing, I think, from things that happened years ago. I'll be driving and just all of a sudden, or having a day where I need to sort of release certain things that have been maybe held within my body, you know, because I had to survive or I had to function. <laughs> so those things got pushed aside, you know. So... Now, if I have a day where I need to do that, I just get quiet and say, okay, I, you know, there's sometimes like, all right, what's going on? <laughs> what's this about? But I think, you know, okay. And if you write about what it's about, it'll come through and it'll say, this is just stuff that needs to be released. It needs to get, be seen. It's a part of you that needs to be seen because it hasn't been seen or hasn't been looked at or, and it's good to, you know, all those complaints that we have about our parents and other people, it's good to write those down and then say, how can I give those to myself? How can I give the things that my parents weren't mature enough or aware enough or whatever that they couldn't? Do you know what I mean? How can I give those things to myself? How can I be there for myself in ways that maybe my parents couldn't be there for me or maybe this guy you know, or this relationship couldn't be there for me? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally agree. And um, super nice thoughts that you mentioned there. Speaking um, of social media and change, um, one thing I wanted to touch up on is that you also recently have explored a bit more and um, actually, yeah, I would say added something also to your like working life and have invested in um, a new social media app from Germany, it's called Wiser. So, you know, I just wanted to ask you, how did you know that, you know, there's something else out there besides the things that you did before and that you wanted to explore, uh, explore more and then chose to take on this opportunity in your life? Um, I have so many friends that do so many things. So I know that there's so much, certainly so much more out there than, than what I do. And, and I've always been interested in, in so many things and so many is, which is why I became an actress. There was just too many things I wanted to do. <laughs> 
Um, and I guess it was, it was the timing of it partly like, and the people involved, you know, Eric and Benjamin, um, who, and they, you know, had approached me about doing it. So I was just super fascinated and, and realizing that it was something that I wished was out there, right? They say, if, you know, if there's a book, you know, write the book that you feel like that, that's not, doesn't exist, right? Like if there's something missing, go out and find, find the way to, to put it in the world. So that's kind of what Wiser is. Um, it's a social media app for knowledge and expertise and to be able to share knowledge. And, you know, I can learn about what you're learning about. You can learn about what I'm learning about. You can, you know, as a creator, you can monetize your content, which is wonderful in short form or long form. And it makes it easy for people like me who aren't super technical or don't want to be technical in many different spaces. I can be in one space and it's and it's easy for me to create there um, and share. So it just made a lot of sense to me. I thought, oh my God, I wish this was, you know, if you guys had created the app already, like, you know, we're fundraising and and, and developing the app now, but um, you can you can get it in the app store. It's already in the app store. You can sign up. It's W H Y Z Z E R. Um, yeah, and it's it's also a way of, to curate knowledge. So if there's something you're an expert in or you're interested in, you could curate it and share it. So we can follow people based on their curation of certain certain knowledge and expertise, which I find fascinating. I, yeah. I can't wait for that to be, to get, I'm so excited, I'm always talking this, can you get it done now? Can you, you know, get it made? I want to use it now already. So. Code faster. Code faster, like how do we get this done, you know? Kelly, for the end, I still have some quick fire questions for you. Um, so I just um, read them to you and you give me your first thought, okay? Okay. What would you say um, is your most treasured memory of your acting career I, I think Gossip Girl probably but there's so many I mean there's honestly I loved Homefront Briscoe County Junior it's I think just being able to do it honestly just feeling so fortunate to, to be to, to do what I do to have done the work I've done what would you then on the other hand say what was the toughest moment in your acting career I think just, I think the beginning is always the challenge. Once you get going, it's a bit easier. I think it's just getting going and having the confidence to pursue it and to, to show up. And even when you kind of don't always feel like showing up, you know. What is something that you would have wished to learn way early on in your life? I think just that it's okay to be yourself. You know, it's okay to be your quirky self and... That just because you again you don't fit in or that you know you can still enjoy people you can still but stay true to yourself you know I think I think the desire to be liked and to be to fit in causes stress and final one what's your advice on love I think love is really about giving somebody else their freedom to be who they are And that's not always easy because sometimes that takes them away from you. But it's okay. Because if you really love someone, you want to be there, not because they, you have to be. Yeah. You know? So, and I think that's how you, you know, because that person keeps steadily showing up. They keep consistently being there without your having to make them be there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, totally. I don't um, know. I hope I'm explaining. Yeah. I don't know. It's, again, we could do a podcast on each one of these subjects. It's so yeah, so right. Wonderful. It's like it's it's huge, huge topics, and I think it's also so important. I mean, we talked about this, but to figure out, you know, what it means for you to take time for yourself, figure things out, and listen to that inner voice. And, you know, usually it tells you pretty much, you know, what feels right and what feels wrong if you are able to really listen. And we also have time to appreciate people more. I think, you know, when you get quiet with yourself and you're okay with you, you can, 
you're more generous in terms of being able to see and appreciate others and the beauty of other people, whether they're for you or not, right? Whether it's whether they're for you as a friend, whether for you as a lover, a business associate, whether, you know, you can sit back and appreciate everyone a lot more and their qualities. Mm. I think that's that are some nice words to to answer this um to end this podcast episode kelly thank you so so much for oh. taking the time and for yeah you know just also allowing us to look a bit behind the scenes and just be super open and also vulnerable with me you know i think that's i don't want to take that for granted and i don't so i'm super grateful that you yeah joined for an episode with me Oh, on the show <laughs> you're so wonderful thank you so much thank you thank you kelly